This year I got offered a ticket on a syndicate water that I've been waiting for for a long, long time. Eight, nine, maybe, maybe ten years, I can't remember when I put my name down. But I'd, I'd almost given up on it when I got the phone call offering me a place and I was, uh, I was really shocked to get offered a place, to be honest with you. You know, in, in Covid times, I just assumed whatever syndicates I was on, I was on them for the next two to three years because not many people are dropping syndicate places at the minute. So to get a phone call for here, I just, I just had to take it really. Now it's an expensive ticket at over two grand, so that was my main concern. Could I give it the time to do it justice? Because time is a premium for me at the minute. Um, I, I work a nine to five these days and it's difficult to get away for any sort of length of time. And with this place being, well, it's two and a half hour car journey away, plus barrying around and finding swims and, and whatever else on this big water, it's, it's not exactly the sort of place you can do quick overnighters on. So I knew I had to kind of dedicate a little bit of time to it. So what I've been doing at the minute is, is just using a lot of my holidays up to, uh, to come down here and to fish the place. When I got down here for my first session, I had a, I had a quick walk around the lake, just, just trying to get my head around it all, because I'd been a walk around here before, but I didn't really know which swims were which. And then when I walked into one swim that controlled the central part of the lake, there's an island at a very long distance out in front of it. Um, I soon realised that this could be a decent swim to start off, you know, a good passing swim, one that could see a big bulk of the lake. Um, and I later found out it was a swim called Hole in the Bush, which I'd heard a fair bit about. You know, it's one of these, uh, one of these well-known swims. So I got in that and luckily just after my first night, I think it was the following morning about nine o'clock, I received a bite and, and landed my first carp from here. It wasn't the biggest fish. It was a stocky at about 14 pound, I think it was, but I was off the mark. But luckily after that fish, I got two rods back on the island mark at long range. And uh, I was lucky enough to, uh, to have a bite at dawn. Well, happy with this one on my first session. 39 and a half pound. You give me a right run around in the night. I got a bream. Um, just before dawn, got the rod back out again. 20 minutes later, this tightened up. I thought it was another bream, and it wasn't. <laughs> 39 pound mirror, happy days. That's a nice way to end the session. 37 pound 10, on the same rod as the other two. Happy days. On my next session down, I managed to drop into another big open water swim and did a night in there, but I, I just didn't see any signs of fish at all and I had a bream the following morning, but it just looked dead and lifeless out there. So I wound in about lunchtime, had a walk around and found a few fish in the little lake. Now the little lake is joined to the big lake by a channel that's about I don't know, two rod lengths wide, something like that. So the fish can move in and out. Although it's got a reputation of holding a few resident smaller fish in there. So, but there was definitely some, well, there was definitely a lot of activity in there. And some of the fish looked, looked a decent size. So I dropped in the little lake and I had three bites in a night and I landed a small stocky, uh, lost one on a hook pull, and then I landed a mid-30 common, which was a really nice fish. But unfortunately, just as I was transferring it from the net to the sling, it managed to power off. Just I'd let go of the net before I'd fully hold of the sling. Shoot off into the water, I managed to grab hold of the net, but the net had unfurled in the process and uh, got straight off the top of the net cord and, and went. Whether that counts as a capture, I don't know. Um, but the following session down, I had a good walk around the lake and the only fish I could find again were in the small lake. This time I saw quite a few signs of fish, you know, pads just knocking and when I went to have a look at a tree I just saw a tail pattern and something just moved off. And I saw two sort of definite fish just sunning themselves in the pads. One was a, a kind of scraper 30 and the other one was a, a mirror about £10 bigger. Just sitting there in the pads and I'm thinking, well, if there's a £40 mirror in there it's well worth dropping in and having a go. And that session I did two nights in there and had six bites. Um, lost two due to hook pulls, one of them I got right in and it carted round the corner to try and go down the, the, the channel. I tried to keep a tight line on it, tried to get my chest weighted on to get out there, but at some point I stumbled, must have given it a little bit of slack line and by the time I got out there my chest it had gone and I just ended up with a big ball of weed, so I was quite gutted about that because I felt like a decent fish. Um, but luckily a few hours later I landed a 27, which was nice, uh, and then I had a couple of smaller fish. Um, and then ended that session with a 31-12. So things were going really, really well. I'd done six nights for 12 bites, landed nine fish. So things were really flying down here. And that's kind of where it went a little bit wrong after that. Um, the following week I managed to get down. I did my first three night session. 
and despite moving a few times, trying to stay proactive, trying to stay on fish, I blanked. The following week, again, was another blank. But again, I was moving, staying on fish, just trying to do everything really, really actively, and trying to do things right, but it just didn't pan out for me. And then that takes us to this session that I'm on now. Um, I started off the first night, I had a good walk around everywhere. I saw a couple in the little lake, but they weren't particularly big. There were a few other signs of fish, but I was, I was wondering, were they the resident small ones in there, or I had a couple of big fish got in there. And I, I went and walked around again, and then I found three fish in a snag in what they call Animal Farm. Now, they've been fish sitting in that snag for the last three weeks, and they'd always sit in the same position. Um, one of them was the big two-tone ghosty, which is about 46, 47 at the minute. So it's a big old fish. So I had a word with matey opposite that was fishing the main open water slip and he said he didn't mind me dropping in there, so I, I dropped in there. But I think I spooked him out just getting the rods out, really. Um, I only had one cast, just flicked it tight to the, the branches and a few handfuls of bait around it, but I think that was enough to spook them out. I, I, I stayed and did the night when I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have moved at dusk um, when I saw a sign of a fish somewhere else, but I thought, no, just, just stick it out and it might rock up again the following morning. But they didn't. Um, so the, the, the following morning, about lunchtime, I wrapped everything up, got it all in the trolley, and I moved about three swims up to a swim that controls the open water where I'd heard something turn over the night before. Um, so I set the bivvy up, chucked everything in the bivvy, and I needed to go back down to the car to get some, get some gas because I ran out of gas. As I walked around the lake, I found a few fish just, just under a snag down here on the right-hand side. And I was wondering and what to do. This is where I found them yesterday. Just under this oak tree down here. I've not seen them down here this morning. You never know, they could rock up. It's early afternoon now. And there was a few fish just sitting just down there. Well, I saw one fish just down there initially. And then I saw another fish down here. And as it looked more and more, another one came to join it. Now this is not exactly out of the way. This is a main path that comes straight the way through and this is a, a sort of public walk to park really. So there's people, prams, dogs, coming past here all the time. But there were fish down there, content and feeding. Now my issue is, because I didn't know the lake that well, I thought the only swims that control it were the swims across there and that was the only way to really fish it. But they're not really night swims, they're just tiny little day swims or stalking swims. So I was unsure what to do. So I gave a mate of mine a ring that used to fish here years ago and he says, have a look at up and over. So uh, what I did is I went right around the other side of the lake, right where my gear was, packed it all up, got it all on a barra and shifted it all around here to try and work out what to do and to work out how to catch these fish that were down here. Yeah, unfortunately they're not down here at the minute so uh, I was hoping they'd come back today but not yet. By the time I got back round here, I went back down the tree line again and I found there's about six or seven fish that I could see all under this tree line, all looking happy, all feeding. So I stood up here trying to work out how I'm going to fish down that tree line safely. And just as I was standing here, I saw a ghosty come off this oak tree here and start moving out there. And the more I looked, the more I watched, the more I saw there's about six or seven fish down there. And they came all the way out down here, up to there, and what you can't probably see is there's a shallow bar all the way up here leading into my own bank. It sort of got near to the shallow bar and then headed towards me and then disappeared off to my left. And I thought, is that all the fish gone? But when I went back down that tree line, there was still about four or five left. So I think there was quite a few fish down there initially. So I didn't know if they'd gone up there and decided to head up there towards the snag swim or whether they were sort of staying sort of in this area, just going out on big loops and then coming back again. Really wasn't sure. But... The more I looked at this swim, the more I realised that you can actually fish down this tree line here a little bit. Um, you can't hit see it from the swim at all, but if you wade down here, you can cast down there a little bit. I spoke to an old mate on the phone who fished here a few years ago, and he says, all this tree line here is undercut. So I didn't want to go all the way down to the oak where a lot of the fish were, because some of them were still up this, this tree line underneath this silver birch and this elder and whatever here. So I went about two thirds of the way down, and got a nice little clean drop on the lead, rushed around here, put a bit of bait in and I was happy with that and then had a bit of a lead around in open water with the other rods. Once I'd get everything settled, everything sorted, I went back down to the tree 
and they weren't there. And I was a little bit gutted. I thought I'd, I'd spooked them by leading around too much, getting the rods in place, um, getting a bit of bait in place and getting sorted. And I was just debating what to do. And I, I kind of looked at my watch and it was about half six at night. I thought, shall I move back round to the other side of the lake where I'd caught from previously? So where I, where I was going to fish previously. Um, but then I thought, well, I'm not going to get round there and get set up before dark. So I decided to stop. And it was a good job that I did because at half six, the right hand rod just crippled round with a bite and I had a bit of a fraught battle and it went under these trees quite far under. I could just feel the line plinging off some of these ones at the end where I could see the line hitting it. And I managed to get it back, managed to get it back and I managed to get it in the net and it was a, it was a very, very welcome 26 pound common. I just managed to get the photos done of that 26 and the rod back out before the rain started. And when it started, it was absolutely torrential. And I spent the rest of the evening looking at the inside of my bivvy door because I, I had to zip up because of wind was just pushing in there and pushing the rain in as well. And I must admit, I wasn't very confident in the night. You know, I'm fishing this little bay all in close quarters. And, you know, I, I kind of assumed this swim was a kind of one bite swim. Once, you, once you'd had a bite in here, um, then I think, you know, they can quite easily disturb the whole of the swim and, and spook everything else out. And the annoying thing was, even though I put the fish back and faced it that way, it still swam back that way to where the rest of the fish were hopefully holding and, and where I had two rods. So, yeah, I, I kind of thought my chance was up. So I must admit, I got bored looking at the inside of a bivvy door and there's only so much YouTube you can watch and everything else like that. So I, I crashed out a little bit early. Normally I stay up listening to, listening to the lake, especially this time of year in October. You know, you, you can hear a lot of shows at night, but with the wind hacking in and the rain hacking in, there's just no point. And I, I think I crashed out about quarter past 10, half past 10, something like that. And then at about 11 o'clock, I was just woke up to all hell breaking loose. The, the receiver in the bivvy was just going absolutely bandy. You know, I thought all three clutches were locked up reasonably tightly. And I came out and just see the middle rod just absolutely peeling line off. And I picked the rod up and it was just a big dead weight that was just kept surging off and surging off slowly. So I knew it was a, I knew it was a big, big fish. Um, and I was a little bit worried because it, it took me from out in front, kited all the way down this margin, down to almost the oak tree, I, I'm, I'm guessing, or maybe into the oak tree, I don't know. Luckily, most of it is undercut. And I just had to cut, inching it back, inching it back, inching it back, and then every now and then it'd surge off. And I'd, well, I want to say I couldn't stop it, but there's always that fine line between trying to stop something and just putting everything to an extreme. And I, I just had to play that game where you're just on the cusp of just, just giving it line when you had to, but not give it any more than you, you needed to. And eventually I inched it back, inched it back, and, and in the dark and in the rain, I managed to slip the net under this, 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 this big lump of a fish. Well, take a look at this colossal unit. This is what I do a five hour round trip for. These are the sort of chunks that a bit feisty. These are the sort of chunks I'd love catching. 49 pounds and two ounces. Absolutely blown away. I think it's a fish called drop scale. Oh, it's, got, it's got a little drop scale just there underneath its dorsal. Happy days. Well, it's great to catch drop scale and and hopefully I'll get a few more of the, the older fish that are in here, but the thing is they don't last forever and it's, it's probably fair to say that there's not as many old fish in here as what there used to be. You know, probably three quarters of them, two thirds of them have you know, died now and it's not really surprising because they are really old fish. Um, I know that drop scale and a couple of others were stocked in 1976. So those fish are, well, they are, they're older than I am. And it's good to see that they're still going, they're still in good condition and they're still putting up one hell of a scrap. So. You know, to get a fish of, of that sort of age at that sort of size, I'm, yeah, I'm just absolutely blown away. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take the long two and a half hour journey home with a, with a big smile on my face. 